biggest problem I had was working with all men. Um, and men who are kind of frightened of this whole concept of women working in, in their area. Um, most of the men are pretty traditional and uh, their wives don't work or if their wives do work they're like secretaries or waitresses or something like that. And they all, all their wives have children. Their primary role is of mother and housewife. And uh, I have no interest in that role at all, and I make it pretty obvious. Um, and it wasn't, we never really had any problems. It was just that they were kind of fra afraid, and they didn't really understand, and they figured that, you know, I was just too young, but pretty soon somebody snatched me up, and then I wouldn't work there anymore, you know. Some, some man would snatch me up and be my protector. And I wouldn't have to do this non digital dirty job anymore. But I love it. I just love it. I like making good money and I like being independent. And they're getting used to it now. And they're excited. And now I'm an old maid. I'm over the hill. It's too late. So. <laughs> That's the way it goes. think about the money and then they they're not really committed to doing that and they make it worse for other women because they're not really serious about their job and they just um, don't know you know what they're getting into and they don't want to really perform and become competent workers they just think well I they have to hire me because I'm a woman and, and that old right basically I think to start out in the entry level job and get in there and then decide if you want to take classes and pursue it any further but you need to know those basic things I think they still have on the exams if you can if you like working out in the weather I mean if you can handle it some people don't like it but they can handle it some people just cannot they don't like that or if they don't like some women I guess just don't like being dirty that's really a big thing I mean why take a class you could get you know, four point in some math class if she's good at math and electronics, and then if she can't work in the weather, what good does it do? And so, if you know if you know those things first, and whether uh, this one woman just panics behind the wheel, she just you know can't get used to driving, and it's a big part of the job. Journeyman or helper or anything, you have to be able to drive and feel comfortable doing that when it's a big part of your job. And um, so I think it's still necessary to, but the training that I was thinking about is um, affirmative action type training for women going into, I mean, some of it can be pretty generalized, women going into the trades, um, 
just telling them more exactly about what that job is. You know, what is going to be expected of you? What is going to happen? Like, you know, I didn't know that these guys were going to feel threatened, you know, because I thought, well, gee, why would they feel threatened? You know, I'm just a little <laughs> one person here. I don't see any hordes of dykes thundering down on their, their jobs. I found out about the city through people, friends, and uh, through advertisement. And I found out that it was possible to get jobs where you could work out of doors and uh, be paid a decent wage. I found out who to contact, and I called him and called him and called him and called him and called him. And, called him. and uh, Finally, I think after he just finally got tired of my calling him two and three times every day, <laughs> I got an interview. They were quite honest. They frankly told me they didn't know how to interview me because they'd never, you know, interviewed a woman before. Okay, I was a CETA laborer, and then finally, after down to two or three times of almost laid off and <laughs> almost non-funded and this and that and the other, I finally became a regular laborer. And uh, then as a, re a regular laborer, while well, as a regular laborer, I was, uh, and as needed utility labor, which is the next step up, I was in as needed maintenance labor, which is the next step up after that. I was an as needed truck driver. And I was asked me to dispatch her. And then finally, finally, I got a utility rating. I also started being an ASME foreman, mm -hmm. which was quite another flash in the pan. It was unheard of for a laborer to be an ASME foreman, let alone for a girl. Hi. Graduated from high school and went right into college. Spent four years, got two degrees, one in general arts and science, one in graphic arts. I had part-time jobs, restaurants, gas stations, um, advertising agencies. When I finally did get out of school, I needed a job that paid well, and since my degrees didn't really help me there, and it was all minimum wage, I started looking for a better paying job. I applied for a laborer's position with the city, and because it paid well, and I finally got put on the list, got some interviews, had to go through some working tests of lifting jackhammers and lumber that type of thing, running Have you ever worked in a laboring field before? No, not as a laborer. I worked in gas stations, pumping gas, washing cars, but not in a digging ditch situation. When I did get hired in the city, I was hired directly into sewer as a general laborer first woman in sewer utility, so, and I must have worked out because I've been here for a while now. <laughs> and I moved up fairly quickly through the labor classifications from general labor to utility labor to maintenance labor, mainly because people retire and positions are open and they fill the slot. Do the women in Tonga work uh, for, like, the city of Seattle that, uh, you know, use a jackhammer or anything like that? No, I went through that kind of job. When you went back to Tonga and you told your friends and your family, 
what, what kind of a job you had here with the city. What was their reaction? My dad don't want this. Don't want me to work like this. He doesn't? No. Why is that? He says it's too hard for me. Uh -huh. But I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> So most people in Tonga, all women, like they work in the office, mm -hmm. but they don't do this this kind of job. They don't do it. No, the men don't let them do it. <laughs> well, how, how, how did they react to you when when you went back to Tonga and maybe some of your 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 boy uh, your male friends? I don't want to say boyfriend, but your your male friends uh, when you told them what you did. I think they just don't believe it. <laughs> I do this kind of job. Uh -huh. So in Tonga, the women don't go out and use jackhammers and shovels and, and work beside the men in the street? No. They used to stay home with the kids. Mm -hmm. Now, is your husband from Tonga? No, from here. He's from here. Okay. Yeah. So if your husband had been from Tonga, would he have allowed you to come to, I mean, would he have, have said, no, I don't want you to do that work? I think he'd say no. <laughs> I think he want me to stay home uh -huh. with the kids. So you've been able to work that out with your husband? Yeah, he says up to me. Okay. Okay, how did you resolve it with your dad? I, I know that uh, most of you have real tight family ties, and to go against uh, uh, your father, and what he says is a pretty, pretty severe move for you to be making. Yeah, he keep talking to me about it, but he know I'm married, so it's up to my husband. I mean, I didn't know anything about using a pitchfork or a sickle or anything like that. I didn't know what anything. Was your like, just a general labor, <clears throat> and. Um, so I started out doing that and doing um, clear, clearing off uh, stairways and things like that, and that was it was wasn't bad except that I was uh, allergic to grass. <laughs> <laughs> so my eyes would swell up and uh, I get knots all over my. And one day my eyes just swelled up so bad I couldn't even see. So uh, that, well, I said, we're going to have to try and do something about that. You know, you can't have you going around with your eyes all full up and bumps all over your arm. So I um, told George about it, and he says, well, we'll see what we can do. So then I went into um, landscaping, which isn't as bad. There's still, you know, flowers and trees, and I sneeze a lot, but it's still not as bad as being right there with the dead grass and stuff like that. That really bothered me a lot. So this isn't so bad. But so I've been in landscape now ever since. And I enjoy landscaping. Um, sometimes I do. I must rephrase that. Sometimes I do. I hate weeding. I mean, that's one of the worst things. I, it just drives me crazy because you're sitting there pulling up these little weeds all day. And it just drives me nuts. But um, at least you can see some of the things that you've done around the city. And street maintenance, you can't see. I mean, you clear out the sidewalks in the next couple of weeks, it's, you know, it's there. It's just, it's not a very fulfilling thing.